Hello everyone, my name is Akash Deep Singh and I am a PhD student at UCLA. Today, I am going to present our paper titled, I Always Feel Like Somebody is Sensing Me, a framework to detect, identify and localize clandestine wireless sensors. This work was done jointly in, in collaboration with my lab mates, Louis and Joseph, and with my advisor, Professor Mani Srivastava. Sensors are all around us today. They have made our lives so much easier. And over time, they have become smaller and smaller and so much easier to install. Since these are omnipresent in our households, they can record really intimate details about our lives. Today, these sensors have become so small that anything can be spying on you. This problem becomes particularly important in third party spaces whose access we do not control. As anecdotal evidence suggests us that owners of motels, hotels, clothing stores, and other types of lodgings have spied upon their occupants. Before we begin, let's look at what we are up against, the adversary model. Anecdotal evidence, again, suggests us that due to the ease of installation and small form factor, most of these devices are wireless. Similarly, we also assume that these sensors are live streaming either directly to the adversary or to a cloud service. Finally, the adversary can place these devices on any Wi-Fi network, which can be open, closed, hidden, or password protected. There are some existing tools and techniques that claim to solve this problem. However, these tools themselves suffer from either a very high false positive rate or a lack of user experience, or maybe they require so much human effort that it's very difficult to scan for these sensors in any space. For example, a bug detector is just a radio receiver that beeps if it detects power above a certain threshold in a frequency band. It gives no semantic information about what is the cause of the power, power spike. It could be your phone, laptop, or Wi-Fi router. We do not know. And this leaves a lot of room for false positives. So can we do better? Let's start by looking at the Wi-Fi packets that are being transmitted. While the frame body is encrypted, we can still get other information from these packets, such as MAC address of the sender and the receiver, as well as payload size of each packet. This brings us to our first idea. Let's sniff the Wi-Fi traffic and find out all the active frequency. For every MAC address that we detect, let's aggregate the traffic being sent over small time windows. We use Wireshark to sniff Wi-Fi packets and aggregate the traffic. Now let us look at how these devices behave. For reasons of bandwidth efficiency and power, most of these devices use variable bitrate encoding. That is, they transmit more data when the scene is changing rapidly and less data when the scene is static. Such is the case for temporal compression in, in cameras and event-based transmission in motion sensors. Before we go any further, let's take a moment to understand how this works in practice. When you are watching a video between consecutive frames, only a small portion of the scene is changing. For example, in this scene, only the area around the speaker is changing. Both background and foreground remain static for a large part of this video. This means that if we send them again and again, we are basically wasting bandwidth. So what temporal alg algorithms typically do is, that they divide the scene into several smaller subsections. Each subsection can be treated as an independent entity. Initially, they send out one complete image called an iframe. After this, they only transmit changes in the scene. That is, some sections will stay the same, some sections will change completely, some sections will move, and so on and so forth. These changes, along with their preceding iframes can be used to reconstruct the scene completely. These are called P frames. In addition, there are also B frames, which can be decoded using frames in both directions. This implies that if a scene is static, the camera will only need to transmit a small portion of information. However, if the scene changes rapidly or the scene is dynamic, the camera will need to transmit a lot more information than it would have with if, the, if the scene was static. Similarly, in case of motion sensors, instead of transmitting continuously, they only transmit when a motion event is detected. When motion occurs, these sensors send information to their cloud service 
for further processing as shown in the figure. So to summarize, more activity means more or dynamic traffic, whereas less activity will mean less or stable traffic. This leads us to our second idea. Let's exploit this VBR encoding. The traffic of a device that is monitoring me should change in response to my motion. That is, if the scene is static, the traffic of the device would be less or stable. And when I walk into the scene and start doing some activities, the traffic of the device will become dynamic and change rapidly to higher value. So when the scene is static, the traffic of most of these sensors is constant, apart from a few changes here and there. However, if they are indeed monitoring my activities, their traffic should change rapidly when I do something to make the scene dynamic, such as if I walk into a room and start walking. So let's say that I stand outside a room and monitor its traffic. Now, if I enter the room and start walking and see the traffic of a device change, I can say that there is probably a camera in the room spying on me. But what if, what if there's a camera outside the room and it's monitoring the motion of somebody else who is walking outside? Or what if this change in traffic was simply due to your laptop, your phone, or somebody else's phone in the scene? Now we have a false positive. This leads us to our third idea. We need to find out what the ground truth is in order to truly ascertain if the network traffic changes are indeed in response to my activities. So we go into a room and stand stationary for some time. Then we start doing some activity, in this case, jumping jacks, and then stop again. Finally, we do this activity again and stop again. This is called stop, start, stop, start, stop, or the S5 motion. If there is indeed a camera recording us while we do the S5 motion, its traffic should change like this in response to our motion, which is it, has, it is stationary when we are stopped, increases when we start doing some activities, goes down again, comes back up again and goes down again, finally. This was indeed the case during our experiments. We had two cameras, one looking outside and the other looking at the scene. We use accelerometer on the smartphone as a ground truth sensor. You can see the relationship between the ground truth and the camera traffic. While there is no clear relationship between the ground truth sensor and the traffic of a camera, which was not monitoring the scene. To ascertain that this relationship is indeed true, we use Granger causality which has been extensively used in econ economic analysis. It states that if I have two series, X and Y, and if the prediction of Y improves by also using the previous elements of X, we say that X Granger causes Y, or there is a cause and effect relationship between X and Y. Even if we detect the presence of a device snooping on us, what good is it unless we can physically locate the device? In the following section, we describe how we can localize a camera. Please read our paper to know more about localization of other sensors. Cameras, like most other sensors, are directional. If we perform the S5 motion within the field of view of the camera, we can detect Granger causality. However, if we are outside this field of view, then no Granger causality can be detected. This leads us to our next idea which is let's exploit the directionality of these sensors for localization. First, we ask the user to walk around the, the edges of the space so that we can get a rough estimate using dead reckoning. Then we ask the user to perform S5 motion at various points in the room and mark the points depending upon whether we were able to establish a cause effect and effect relationship or not. We eliminate the region with no cause effect relationship and take a laptop and flash colors on its screen rapidly, something like this. Then we stand at the center of the remaining space and point our laptops in two opposite directions, in this case, left and right with this, this flashing color patterns on its screen. We, we shield the other side of the, of the room with our body. If the camera is looking at the screen, its traffic should increase in response to the flashing colors on the screen. If it is not the case, then the traffic of the camera should stay constant and fairly similar to what it was in case of a static scene. Then we pick up pick the region where we actually saw an increase in traffic and remove the other region from our total search space. We continue doing this until we end up with a sufficiently small space that can be searched manually. All these four ideas lead us to our solution called Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg detects, identifies, and localizes devices using their traffic and a ground truth sensor. 
We implemented packet sniffing on a laptop, but in future, we expect that even a rooted smartphone or a smart watch can be used for this process. We use a smartphone as the ground truth sensor. We evaluated Snoop Dogg on 13 popular and well-known devices ranging from cameras, home assistants, motion sensors, and an RF sensor. Snoop Dogg operates in three different modes. First is the background mode. Second is the active mode where the user is asked to perform the S5 motion. And finally, the localization phase after detection when the user is given some steps through which he or she can localize the sensor in the space. We perform over 200 trials and show that Snoop Dogg can detect snooping devices with an accuracy of about 95%. There are several ways in which adversaries can fool Snoop Dogg. These include channel hopping, Mac randomization, and padding the data. You can read more about all of these in our paper. Thank you so much for listening. Please read our paper for more details. I'll be happy to take your questions now.